Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack Productions. Today I, Bancroft, being joined once again by Jimmy, Trevor, and like always, Fluff. Yes, sir. Hello. What's up, people? And like always, there's buttons down below. Feel free to click them. They're there for a reason. Today's matchup is, once again, two new decks, which in involves the Jiren that you all saw Fluff play, I think, yesterday or the day before, versus Trevor's take on Majin Buu. Guys, take it away. So, Trevor, we've kind of seen and talked about Jaren at this point. Uh, tell me a little bit about Boo. Yeah, um, so I have was uh, allowed the opportunity uh, to borrow these cards from Bancroft and Fluff since I've, not, I've purchased them at this point, but at the time I hadn't. Um, but I play-tested it a, a lot during the week. Um, primarily, actually, against this Jiren deck. So we've played this match, I think, what, six times now, Fluff? Sounds about right, yeah. Um, and I think the deck is pretty good. Um, I think the leader can honestly just be a generically good green leader since it has the draw two and the the bean effect on the opposite side on the Waken. Yeah. You'd use less of the spirit boost absorb your opponent stuff in like, just a generically good green... Uh, kind of deck setup. Um, yeah. The the only thing that I think that's keeping this deck from being very very solid is the protections for the boos or this particularly the four drop boo uh, requires to it it there's nothing you can do to protect it if it's involved in game mechanics, which in this case, playing against red, negging a card off the field is a game mechanic, so the built-in protection for the boo doesn't um, actually help in this matchup. Yeah. So I've kind of learned against red, you have to play towards a later game, so you really have to like plan around their early turns to kind of survive the onslaught that is wide red boards. But Aside from that, I think the deck has a lot of potential, especially against other colors that aren't red, um, while I try and figure out how to deal with the, the red onslaught. Yeah, red is in an interesting position right now because red is equal parts aggro and equal parts control. And I've, I've frequently compared the, my version of this Jiren to uh, Universe 7 Goku and Thoker. Where, you know, it's very, it, it, the deck, it really depends on your knowledge matchup as well as what windows your opponent opens for responses from the Jiren. So, you know, you're playing a, a battle card here, you know, you are going to Union Absorb, I believe, on the card here in a moment. And if you do nothing, I don't get a window to respond to it. But if you act and just perform your turn per normal, I get to respond to it. Unless I have a Merciless Barrage Yamcha in hand. Yeah, and I mean, the, the issue is is that if I choose not to do it, you just can do it later. So Yeah, yeah just do it in my turn. You have to force it to try and force those resources out of your opponent's hand. Otherwise, they'll just do it to you later. Yeah, is kind of like my thought process here. I mean, it's a super cheap play. Um, doesn't really cost me anything. I get a unison off of it. It still think it's the correct play, um, but uh, oh yeah, no, I think I think it is the correct play in this because you do get your unison in hand for it, and it provides consistency. It makes me burn an ex evolve at that point, um, and then you you comboed and got into against my. My unison and put my unison down to one, which is a really dangerous spot for the Jaren player to be in. So the Jiren, uh, just real quick, the the Topo is kind of the play enabler with the Jiren Spirit Boost evolved during your opponent's turn. But both the Jiren and the Topo Unison have the ability to play one drops for free without using energy. And that is such a key piece to what is making a lot of decks meta right now. And I think there's a really 
low running aggro variant of this deck that just runs the one drops and four drops it doesn't worry about going into the five drops and eight drops for pressure <clears throat> it just runs like a low rapid swing type thing and i when i revisit jaren after this i will probably go towards something more akin to that versus the traditional you know make the jaren tower yeah, I got absolutely spanked on untap by a Jiren deck that was just flying low because I was expecting the, you know, the Jiren chain, like going up through the entire thing. And I was like, okay, I got this, like, you know, no problem. And then on turn three, he's just like, hey, here's nine battle card attacks. Have fun. Yeah. And I was like, God yeah. damn, damn, dude. <laughs> like, come on. It's just finding the other because the Universe 11 stuff is pretty pricey outside of the Jirens as far as its energy investment. And I think Bardock crew is limited to red sand leaders. Uh, only one of them is limited to a red sand leader. Oh, so Bardock crew could go in this deck. Yes. Okay. Was that what that on the untapped deck was playing then? Yeah, he was, he was running a small uh, crew package. That's spicy. Yeah, it it yeah. was gross. Yeah. Yeah, it seems really good. Because this Jiren engine, the one drops, four drops, is hyper consistent. Like, I don't think that I've ever bricked with this deck. Or if I choose to not perform an action during my turn, like, you'll oftentimes see that I will pass with three or four open energy. It's because I'm choosing to do so, not because I don't have actions. When Trevor and I first started testing these two decks... I had the deck extremely defensive with a ton of extra cards, and there would be bricky moments. Uh, and Trevor gave me some excellent advice. The advice really paid off, and the changes that we made were really strong and really helped the deck become what it is now. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you can evolve into these bigger bodies that it provides control aspects on top of it is, I think, what really makes this Jiren deck shine. Um, obviously, cheap cheap play to removal is always going to be really strong. Um, yeah. And because of the this Jiren package, everything you play is pretty much minusing something. You can do it on your turn or my turn, um, which just allows a lot of play that uh kind of fits what would be your play style allows you to be controlly but also if you want to and you see an opportunity to go aggressive you will take it and you will make make your opponent pay for it yeah it it really is it really is an interesting fun kind of play style um i do forget here and <sighs> this is so dirty and, and, like, I forget that your leader can do this, where you absorb a card on the field, and and it's just the saddest thing in the world to lose one of my Jarens that way. Because I know it's just not coming back. Like, I'm not going to get it back. It's gone. It'll stay under your leader until you decide my graveyard can eat it. Yeah, and I'm kind of wondering, do you think taking the four is the correct play, or should I have taken that one that you're able to extend plays off of instead? Uh, taking that one and just holding on to it is really strong, because that one activate main drop area effect basically lets me free search my deck for any Jira and Evolve piece that I need. Mm -hmm. So taking that one drop is not a terrible terrible play but you got rid of a piece of my my aggression and now you're killing the one drop so you're gonna handle it one way or the other yeah i think i looking back on it i think the proper play was probably take the one drop charismatic the other four charismatic the four yeah um but uh at the beginning of the turn, I thought to myself, okay, uh, I, don't, I don't know what I have in my hand right now, but I was like, I need to establish this unison so I can make use of the spirit boost on the leader. And then um, if I have any other spirit boost options in my hand to have them as options as well, I know I'm probably not going to be able to establish my four drop again this turn um, just because of kind of the, the systems that we've already talked about. 
uh, especially if you have Yamcha Merciless Barrage in hand, um, which it feels like every time I play against you, you do have Mer- Yamcha Merciless Barrage in hand. Um, no so... idea what it is, but Yamcha Merciless Barrage and Wolfing Fist rise to my hand so much that my super combos are always clumped in like the last 10 cards of the deck. I don't know what it is, but it's like when I swing with Leer, when I awaken a draw, it's either a Merciless Barrage or Wolfing Fist. It it never fails. Yeah. What you're um, saying is Yamcha's all sticky. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You got to think for Yamcha, bro? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I'm not really into baseball players, I don't guess. I don't I mean, know. He's a pretty bad baseball player, so I, I mean. Right. I mean, most baseball players that I know in the real world got some cake, so that's nice. But I don't know if Yamcha fits that category. But um, uh, so, so Dragon Ball. Yeah, I'm, where do we go from here? Uh, we've already had a discussion about cake, but the Jiren leader gets to self-awaken a little bit. And one of the things that I was painfully aware of especially in games like this where Trevor knows that one of the correct ways to play against Jaren is to control the field as much as possible. And you pressured my board so much that at one point in this game, I think my hand went down to three cards in hand. And so I was like, you know what? I can't defend the board as much as I am. I have to just go. I can't afford to waste this anymore. So I realized the need for self-awakening in this deck is much more pertinent than it was prior. Because I think in three of the four matches that we tested, I wanted to think I didn't awaken until turn four. Yeah, I mean, part of that's mostly because you kept my board clear. So yeah. my wide aggression that I'm able to do in most other matchups with this deck was non-existent in this one so my options were try and keep topo low so you can't get his second effect off comfortably yeah um and then uh so i'm not going to swing at your leader in that sort of situation especially with the fact that my limited resource is literally my leader so i get one swing per turn i'd rather not give you a card in hand and lower your your options in a later turn yeah which is a fantastic a fantastic approach against this deck. But as you can see, the your board is empty. And that is really, like, this game is not the exception to what happened there. And really funny, just to comment on what cameras happened there, Trevor drew a card, and he was like, why am I drawing from my drop area? And he just starts laughing. He was like, nope, my deck was upside down. I don't know how long it had been like that, but his deck was just upside down for probably three minutes. Yeah, it was on the last turn when I went to look for a Bobbity Unison on the four drop. I just put the deck back down upside down. So let us know in the comments below if you noticed that before I pointed it out. Uh, somebody, somebody's already like made four comments on it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm I was sure. actually about like, to cut you off and ask you why it was upside down, but I was like, you guys finish your sentence first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um I'm thinking this turn as I'm looking at it and I'm looking at my hand, I know what happens. Um I'm kind of just thinking, okay, let's just play this to draw a card. Hopefully I hit something good cuz I I don't have a unison right now, so I can't spirit boost to take his field. And um I literally just tap one and pass because I I what I have in my hand I feel comfortable with defensively. Um, I think I have both the Boo Topo and the... Uh, I don't know if I have the Boo SCR in hand or not, but I was like, I have both options. Um, I want to try and resource them out. So I will... On the first swing he sends at me, I intend to play this Boo, to- Boo Topo and you know, kind of stall it out a turn because I've... I found if I can make it to turn four, turn five with this deck against Jiren, I actually have a, a decently advantageous um, situation. Yeah, the, the boot deck in general is pretty much it, just a, by general rule. If Boo gets to turn five, you're getting your field wiped. 
just because they've run the five drop, they run the they run the uh, Vegeta, they run a bunch of other cards that just blanketly wipe the field. So, and that's really one of the things that super hurts Jiren. It does have the ability to recover, but usually by turn four, turn five, I mean, how many of my four drops have you killed? How many of my one drops are in my drop area? I may not have the pieces to recover. While it would be easy for me to recover if I had the pieces, I just may simply not have access to those pieces. Uh, so here, you you do put out the boo. And so I have to start thinking. I know what's coming next turn. So I have to make the decision to go in hard or just pass and hope I can recover. And I'm looking at the quality of cards in my hand. And I could probably recover thereafter. But it it gets hairy. If I don't decide to put pressure here. Yeah, which is the unexpected. Whenever I play against Fluff, he usually goes, I'll probably find a way to recover in a later turn. Everything's fine. I'll just get resources through playing stuff, and then we'll, we'll pass. You know, you'll burn a couple cards on a couple swings to burn my resources, you know, just try and even it out a little bit. Um but you do the complete unexpected this turn for whatever I'm used to, um, which I think is what this Jared al deck allows you to do that's abnormal, um, yeah. because usually you're the control guy, you know, play around what your opponent does, whereas in this you have an opportunity to really push, kind of like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, in ways that you typically wouldn't. Yeah, you really get the ability to go in hard and heavy on on these attacks and i know that you're gonna burn the gates here whether they be sparking or or other and if i just combo up a little bit and just plan on you comboing out of them even if i can't kill you this turn as long as i leave a negate in my hand i don't think you kill me next turn so that's that's where my head is at thinking about it moving forward like this. I'm almost thinking about comboing all out here. And I was just like, man, I don't know. He's got a bunch of cards in hand, but oh, you were still at three. Oh, lines, so there three. Was no, yeah. yeah, so there was no point in comboing all out. I wanted you to take that. And uh, a place coming up here that... Uh was kind of hinted at in a previous video this week. Um, yeah. Technically an illegal play. And, uh, uh, where he, he's about to EX evolve onto another GRNA drop to secure the game. Um, which, yeah. uh, it's a limit one, so he's not able to do it, but we kind of like talked about it after the game, and he had a negate in hand. The most damage I could do is probably three, and he's at four life. So I don't think I would have had the game either way. I had Supreme Kai in hand too. So on that last swing, I could have put Supreme Kai out and then swung with her and then just comboed her up instead of going into that big body jeer in there. And that is because you're at one life. So double strike versus single strike doesn't really matter. So I think the game, I think I still the game here. Either way, but I, I yeah, say without it, it, that, even with the negate in your hand, you could have still swung with the two Yamchas, right? Or were you under? Uh, I was under the. He's under green topo. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was having to discard two to make a swing. Um, but I felt comfortable with the big 35, 40,000 bodies pushing that sequence there, uh, because I, I, with the cards that he had in hand. I figured, you know, there's probably a unison. There's probably one or two that are combo one 10Ks. So at max, he's going to get up to 50, 55. As long as I can push it to around 60, I'm comfortable. Ooh. Uh, there's a battle card. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, though, that limit one blends in with his fist so well. <laughs> like, you don't even, you really don't even does. see it. Like, yeah. I had no idea because I knew that the autos like on the, the five drop and the four drop, 
Mm-hmm. I knew those were limit one. Yeah, the five drop uh, EX evolve is also limit one. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. had I did not realize that until Jimmy said it, but it really does blend into his fist. So while I didn't intentionally do it, I do apologize for that. But I think that I could have sequenced that turn to work around it. Oh, you absolutely could have. Um, and I probably, with having that boo in hand, I should have just taken the first hit, activate battle, use the boo SCR instead. But like I said, I was kind of just thinking, I need to resource out your hand. And just thinking how you play, I felt like he's just going to pass. He's going to take what he can, gain as much as he can, and then pass. But you're like, nah, I got it. Unexpected. Yeah. And playing against my opponent's way of play instead of thinking, how do I win this game? I'm a big advocate. So I come from Yu-Gi-Oh! And people would drop, like, Max C on you. And and one of the popular things that we used to say in our local group was, like, do you feel like taking the Max C challenge? Like, and so that's basically saying, can you play through giving me 15 cards in my hand to kill me this turn? And so it's the Topo challenge in Dragon Ball. I drop Topo or Boo or whatever. Can I kill you while losing a card per thing? And sometimes you can. Like I've, people don't expect people, like people will oftentimes rely on those cards to just end the turn, but sometimes you can just catch people off guard and still turn. I will say the round previously, it was me and Trevor and he did drop Majin Buu and I'm like, yeah, I'm going for this still. And he did it again. I'm like, now we'll pass him. That's four (laughs) cards. I can't do that. (laughs) Cause that would burn all my combo pieces. Anything I would have used to continue to push and i mean yeah it's yeah. it's real and with that being said thank you all for tuning in hope you all enjoyed keep in mind there's still buttons down below and while fluff those yatro they're on the screen hey click on one of the four videos here hope you like this game hope you're enjoying set 14 let us know the other things that you'd like to see in the comments below um as you can see we love to make mistakes so hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something here um also, give Boo a shot. The deck is really awesome. Uh, I've seen Trevor absolutely explode with that deck, you know, at our locals and in testing. So don't take this as a representation of that. Just Jaren's a bad matchup for it. So read your cards, know your plays, let us make the mistakes so that you don't have to, and fluff out.